Okay, it's time now for the headlines on some dailies. And we begin with the Daily Trust newspaper. The Daily Trust newspaper leads with doubts over Buhari's fresh $800 million loan request. The writers there, Nigeria fast exceeding borrowing limit, budget office. Total debt hit 77 trillion naira. New requests, a patent gift, CDD, no justification to incur debt for incoming government. Use savings from subsidy removal to fund palliatives, Muda Yusuf. You find details of that on page four of the Daily Trust newspaper. And right in front there, you have the picture of Al Haji Abdulaziz Yari, former governor of Zamfara State and senator elect Zamfara West. And uh, the, 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 the caption bes beside his picture is not West deserves Senate presidency. All right, so you find details of that. Uh, well, it is a promotional, but then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's still take some headlines on, on this daily trust. You have Tinubu left for Europe to reduce destruction, spokesperson. NBC lacks power to impose fan, fines on broadcast stations court. That's a major one that concerns us. <laughs> Details of that is on page 14. EFCC arrests Buhari's ex power minister over 22 billion naira fraud. Page 14. That's the much I'll be taking from Daily Trust. Okay. Um, we're moving from Daily Trust to Daily Independent. And uh, Daily Independent leads with Wase aspirants ranking reps reject APC endorsements. Uh, that's still on the tussle in the National Assembly. Uh, riders are accused by the Bia Mila of misleading Tinubu. One party over a repeat of Saraki Tambuwal's coups. Uh, Akere Dolu condemns party's National Assembly leadership zoning formula. All that will be seen on page 29. Uh, Obi LP back Atiku's plea for live broadcast of uh, PEPC sitting. Tribunal fixes fresh date to hear LP's petition. So that starts from page one and moves on to page seven. Um, Senate indicts AGF, NAFDAQ, 45 MDAs for financial infractions. That can be seen on page uh, seven. Still on page seven, we have uh, Nigeria, 59 others at risk of missing maternal newborn SDGs targets. On page six, you'll find stories like Buhari seeks Senate approval to borrow $800 million. Don't interfere in Bielsa governorship poll. Diri wants army. And Tinubu heads for Europe 18 days to May 29, Inauguration Day. Then another major headline there will be why we're still awarding contracts days to government exit. Uh, that's uh, federal government. OK's $129.8 billion naira for further work on Ogoni cleanup and water scheme. And finally, PEPC dismisses petition against Tinubu, APC, others. That's from uh, the Daily Independent there. From the very uh, Daily Independent, we move over to the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper is leading with dissent in APC. Aspirants demand fresh zoning formula. Details of that you find on page two. However, there are two writers APC zoning creation, creating tension, cannot guarantee unity, is an so ones. Not central senators, right? APC chairman decry zoning exclusion. That's on Senate presidency. Four men on trial for killing cousin. You find details on that on page 26. All right. Lagos arranged is in Debo for terrorism. <laughs> you find details of that on page 28. 
NNPCL needs huge investment to meet demand. Page 11 is where you find that statement by Alhaji Ali Dangote. On top of the Punch newspaper, you have subsidy. Buhari seeks approval of $800 million palliative loan. You find details of that on page 19. And trouble looms over rising debt, budget office ones. Page 20 is where you find details of that. An ex bar minister arrested over alleged 22 billion naira fraud. Page 8 of the Punch newspaper is where you find details of that headline. Okay, uh, let's take something from The Guardian, some uh, headlines from The Guardian this morning. The Guardian leads with more cracks as APC House divides against itself. Page 6 is where you find the story. Tinobu's overseas trip stirs reaction. We can find that story on news page 3. Buhari seeks Senate's approval to spend $800 million palliative loan. That is on page 6. More trouble for students as JAMS biometric verification falters. Okay, that's, that's scary. And then Dangote Elumelu Hill NNPC's performance under Kiari. Okay, I don't know the parameters they used, uh, but that will be all from The Guardian. Do we still have another? All right. We have been joined by our analyst, Ezekiel Nya Etok. Good morning to you, Ezekiel. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you people. Always a pleasure to have you on Off the Press, Ezekiel. Well, let's just start with this very um, strong story about subsidy, Buhari 6 approval mm. of $800 million palliative loan. Now, first of all, there's confusion in some quarters. Some Nigerians are wondering, is this a fresh loan? or is it an old one? But we know that it's not a fresh loan. It is one that was gotten uh, when they were considering the removal of the fuel subsidy uh, to use as palliative to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy. So instead of returning this loan, apparently it's been converted to uh, conditional cash transfer. Take us through the process of how we got this money and why we are here with it today. Okay. You know, the very first thing is that there has been this issue of um, um, subsidy. Is it a scam? Is it a reality? Should it stay? Is it sustainable? Should we remove it? That whole discussion led Nigerians to say, look, this is one thing that the poor people will enjoy. If you are to remove the fuel subsidy, what are you going to have as a replacement what are you going to have as a circle for the poor? And then they started coming up with all manner of um, stuff, subsidy, or rather conditional cash transfer and stuff. Then they went to World Bank, tried to get the facilities and everything. But the very first thing is that these guys don't even really know what they want to do. Are you going to remove subsidy? Are you not going to remove subsidy? The very first thing that um, APC uh, promised the presidential candidate during the campaign was that he was going to remove subsidy. And then they say that on the on, uh, by May subsidy will um, so, you know cease to exist. Then recently they came back and said no no not yet not yet we are going to stay action on that. Now you want to collect this money? What are you collecting the money for? Conditional cash transfer on what understanding? And again, 18 days. When is the loan going to be approved? When are you going to do the disbursement? And above all. What is the urgency that Nigerians who have waited for all these years cannot wait for under 18 days so that when the new man comes on block, he's not going to say, no, 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 they did it, I didn't know about it, that's not my program. When they come in, they will tell Nigerians, are we removing subsidy or are we not removing subsidy? If we are not removing subsidy, then what is this money going to be for? If now, Ezekiel, going to... Ezekiel, please establish for us this $800 uh, billion. Is it a new one or is it the same one that was announced earlier by the World Bank to have been given to the country? My understanding is that it is 
the old one that was approved. Uh, the, 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 confusion, the confusion, sir, yes. sorry. The confusion yes. is that the old one, 800 million, was called grant by the same World Bank. And now he's applying for loan. So if he's applying for loan now, that means there are two 800s that we are collecting. One is a grant, one is a loan. So if the grant was what they were talking about, that they were going to use for palliatives and all that, why are they going back now to collect a loan? Because it's, the, it's in the name. So if one it, is a grant and the other one is a loan, that means there are two different things. The, that confusion has, if you've been on the social media space, and you see, we can only speculate. Why can't these guys just be <clears throat> straight with us on these matters? We're just speculating. Now, where the speculation is rife is that the figure is exactly the same. Mm. 800 million, not even 758, but the same 800. Mm. So my thinking, and you see, the process of getting a loan from the World Bank is not something that you just get. Um, even when you get an approval, approval to apply or approval to, you know, there are, there are things that are just not straight for me. My take is that the Senate should just turn down that request, even if it is the grant and they want to activate because the World Bank, once they give you a facility, they are conditions precedent. They do not just take like that. There are certain infrastructure that must be in place. There must be certain understandings, especially if it is a grant. It's in a loan matter that you can say, okay, maybe the backup, but for a grant, they must give very specifics on the deployment of such facility. Mm -hmm. So I think that whatever it is, whether it was a grant or it is a new loan, I think that we as Nigerians, we owe this nation the duty to say, no, leave it for the incoming administration. When the new administration comes, we must interrogate. We're not going to have this situation where we leave government to government. No. There is an office that is higher than the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There's an office that is higher than the government of Nigeria, which has the three arms, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. That office is called Office of the Citizen. We are the employers. And no responsible employer just sits back and says, OK, I've employed you as the managing director of this company, so go ahead and do as you please. No. There's a board. We are like the board. And you must come to us and report. And where there is need for interrogation, the board can call you up anytime and say, why do you want to do this? We don't interfere in the day-to-day -day running, but we interfere in the policies and in the directions and the end game to the end that we, the citizens, are the better for it, which is the essence of democracy. All so right. my bottom line of this matter is that we should tell the government to stand down or the National Assembly stand down let the new government come, and when the new government comes, engage with us and make it very clear what you want to do and how you want to do it. But isn't it interesting that as the president is seeking this $800 million uh, palliative loan, uh, you also have the budget office warning that uh, trouble looms over rising debt for the country? You see, the budget office should shut up with all due respect. They should shut up. You see, this is what you find in Nigeria, and it actually irritates me. When this man was in office, and we, the citizens, were shouting ourselves hoarse, he was, they were keeping quiet and trying to justify many things. They are taking too much loan, borrowing, borrowing. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong in borrowing. I wanted to be a governor. I, I, you can't help borrowing. I, I'm a businessman. I'm a private sector businessman. Okay, But borrowing has certain rules. One of the most fundamental rules is that the circle must close. The circle must close. What that means is that you borrow, you implement, you do all, you return. So you need to show me how that loop closes. How do you intend to return the loan? How do you intend to repay the loan? As a businessman, I'm into real estate. I'll tell you that, look, I need about $500 million to complete this estate I'm doing. Look at the cost benefit I am doing. In the sales, at the end of the sales, I'm going to raise about a billion. I can return your money, I can pay you off, and then I can have a profit left. They look at it, they look at the feasibility, the viability, and at the end, they say it makes sense. I am borrowing for production 
But if I am borrowing to pay school fees, I'm going to tell the people, how am I going to pay back the school fees? It's not going to work. You don't borrow for consumption. You borrow for production. And that is a problem I have with Nigerians. You want to borrow $800 million for conditional cash transfer to give to people. It sounds very good, but you are so dishonest. Who are these people that you've been giving to? Who are they? Go to the street, ask anybody about conditional cash transfer, and they're like, what's that? They don't even know what it is about. They're like, what's that? Eh, what's that? And then you now want to go and borrow $800 million. I, I, I think that the time has come when we as citizens need to sit up, interrogate the systems, and ask government questions, and don't allow them. We have to start to occupy the National Assembly if they start to take decisions that are against the larger interests of this the future of, of, of our, our young children. We, so to some of us, November 1, I'll be 60. You can, remember, you, can, you can tell that I'm already on the other side, which is what happens to most people in government. But what about your children? What about my, your, my grand? I have a grandchild. What about my grandchildren? Where is their future? We need to think for these people and have a heart for them. These guys are borrowing too much. They are borrowing and fridging away the money. And at the end of the day, they are stripping the future of our children to enhance their own very, very ungodly present. We will all jack and leave the debts here. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no, 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 we okay. Okay, now, um, there is tension in the APC because of the zoning and the anointing of some candidates uh, vying for the Senate presidency and the speakership of the uh, national, uh, uh, for, of the House of Representatives and all that. But let me combine that with the fact that the president-elect who is sort of like putting everything together, has traveled uh, less than 20 days to the inauguration. When there are court cases, there are everything, there are things to sort out here in the country. So what are your thoughts on the travel of the president-elect that we've been given the excuse that he has gone for a walking visit, a working visit to Europe? I mean, yeah, yeah. you see, these people... I, I don't, Nigerians, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. When people at high level make very irresponsible, uninformed statements, it actually irritates me. Please, with all due respect, my big brother, Ashiwaju, is a private citizen. He can't go on a walking visit. A president-elect is a private citizen. And until the day you are sworn in, you are not the president. Remember what happened in Bayelsa? The man was taking, getting ready to be sworn in. The next day he was, you know, doing the parade. And the Supreme Court passed a judgment and said, sorry, you are not. What if you had gone to start having walking visits? Walking visits with who? For who? How? So he's not going on any walking visit. That is number one. Number two, they say he's going so as to reduce the pressure. Bros, you never start. You won't reduce pressure. You understand what the office of the president is? Are you going to be staying in London to reduce pressure? Are we going to start on our journey? Stay here. There are problems. They, what if the court says you should come and appear if you are someone as a witness? Are you going to tell us, sorry, I'm abroad, I'm not available? Or is that a, a hidden agenda? Number two, the National Assembly de leadership that you know that you should be interested in. Isn't that the time for you to do this nocturnal, you know, meetings, my guy, you know, please leave this for me. You are the only person that can intervene and people, because of you, they will, you know, shit their sword. That's the only thing. So I, I don't really see the wisdom. Dumb. I don't see the sense. And number three, only a very, very irresponsible investor will talk to somebody who has not been sworn in, somebody who is in the Supreme Court, unless the person is an opportunist. But somebody who is a genuine investor will say, sir, it's just about 22 days, no problem, just hold on, we'll talk after. Be sworn in first. Even if the court will remove you later, it means that you have a signature to sign because you're already sworn in. So when you look at it, and of course, the unsaid story is, could it be possible that he's going for another health, you know, checkup? And 
You know, I, I, I wish it was something that I could laugh over and tell my people, I told you, you know, that is in Do you understand me? But unfortunately, I can't do that because it affects me. It would be like my laughing at myself. It's like smiting my, my, my nose to spite my face. My prayer is that whoever, if he's going to be eventually the president that is sworn in and is our president, my prayer is for divine health so that he will stay back here and do the work. The work is enormous. You know, people talk about Tinubu, Tinubu. I always remember my mother, and I can't forget. This woman was a young lady that made it made life hard for me, and God bless her because he trained me well. And now I now had children. And then when I want to do something, he says, Sana, yeah, leave them, you know, they are little children. What was I? Was I not a little child? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that the people of 20 years ago are not the same people of today. Mm -hmm. They've gotten older. They are looking at things. They are no longer as adventurous as they were. They are a lot more cautious. They are slower. So each time we talk about the Tinubu, the Tinubu, the Tinubu, I want to tell Nigerians to have a certain level of cautious optimism because that man has become older. That man has faced a lot of experiences in life. That man knows that he's on his way out. And as a result, there are certain things he will not dare to dare. And then um, all considered, I think but, that but, but we need my, to... the concern, the concern in other quarters is not just the health concern. The concern is yeah. that the courts have categorically said that one, uh, they will not la allow frivolities. They will not want the court, the cases to drag. And so they will have speedy trials and all that. They also have said that nobody can stand for another person. We had uh, the case of uh, a former governor, uh, Lalong, who was his campaign yeah. manager of sorts, uh, trying to stand for Tinubu. And they said, no, you cannot stand. And then the ne very next day, uh, Tinubu is out of the country, which means he will not be available when the case comes up in court. So Let if he stalls, if he stalls until May 29th, is it going to affect the cases? Is it going to affect the inauguration? Is what is it going to affect, or are I'll the courts just stalking? I'll tell you this. I did a video, you know, like eight minutes video, and I think Nigerians need to know that election process does not end at pronouncement of a winner. No. After pronouncement of a winner, there is a next phase, which is the tribunal. And it doesn't end there. After the tribunal for the presidency and the governorship, there is the court of appeal. It doesn't end there. It ends at the Supreme Court. That's what we've got to know. So if you are, uh, are happy that your, your, your principal has won, please savor that victory with cautious optimism, knowing that have at the back of your mind that the table can turn so that you won't have system shock if tomorrow they say they've removed this governor that was governor-elect or they've removed this president. Just know that there is a process. And Mr. President-elect should also conduct himself as one that has certain hurdles to cross before he is finally, like Adele now can sit down well. After how many months, Norshun State? It's only yesterday that he can say, yes, I'm the man, you know? So I think that uh, Mr. Tinubu, uh, probably seeing the handwriting of the world, because case day, I can assure you, case day, there are fundamental issues that must be addressed. I think that it would have been wiser and more expedient for him to hang around and show himself as a leader, show himself as law-abiding, show himself as not above the law, show himself as somebody who is going to have respect for the rule of law and follow the process, except there is an emergency which has to do with health. There can't be any emergency with the, uh, but, I, I need to go and but, but does sort the court, out. You can't sort out until you are confirmed. Does yes. the court have the power to to influence, say, what happens on Inauguration Day. Because if he, he just evades, this is not arrest, but he doesn't want to appear in court, and he stalls it, he stays overseas until no, May 29th. No, no, no. Can the court do guys, anything? Let me, make, let me make something very clear. He, except the judiciary, is compromised. He has 
nothing says that he must be there. He's summoned. And if he's summoned and he fails to show up, it could be an act, an act of contempt. He can actually be convicted in abstention. Mm. Except there is a health emergency. That is understandable. Outside of that, he cannot stall. And nobody says that they cannot give a judgment without your verdict, without your presence and your testimony. Mm. It is in your own interest to be around, if you are sure of yourself, to give your testimony and show why your victory should not be tempered with. Why do you think that Mr. Peter Obi is inside the court? It's, 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 in fact, it's, there's something called emotional intelligence. It's giving your people that, that swag that, man, this guy, he know what he in the do. I see I'm safe inside the court. It, it, it's a psychological warfare. People are now starting to say, oh, Brussels, it'd be like, say, this man, read the handwriting, you know, they run. Do you get the point? That's okay, not so let's for. move from that story to another one. Uh, the Daily Independent, uh, the Nigeria Guild of Editors, Lords Court for stopping NBC imposition of fines on broadcast stations. Uh, there, Justice Omoto Show yesterday at an... Uh, uh, at the Federal High Court in Abuja, telling the NBC you do not have the judicial powers to fine uh, broadcast houses in Nigeria. Talk to you us see, about see, that. Yes. You see, in Nigeria, this question of impunity is one that we need to look at very well. What makes you think that you have this, what you call the judicial powers? I have a case against you. I'm not just like your landlord. Even a landlord that has owns the house, when there's a breach, he does not take the law into his hands. Worst case scenario, he goes to court. And the court says, guy, you cannot do it. Repay the man's money or leave his house. Do you get the point? Mm -hmm. When a landlord comes to your house and removes the roof because he wants you out of the house, you can actually get him, take him to court and do a lot of things. Why should NBC... NBC is at liberty to have regulatory guidelines. And those guidelines must be attested to or must be abided. You must abide by it if you are one of the practitioners. Where you fail to comply with the guidelines, there is a legal process that you go to. And not you just sit down and impose arbitrary fine. Boom. Come and pay this. And you do it not consistently. I want to ask you, assuming it was this station this station plus TV Africa that did the broadcast of that Adamawa lady live, what do you think N NBC would have done? Now, when NTA did it, which fine did they impose on them? It's arbitrary. It does not have any guidelines that everybody can say, okay, yeah, 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 you know, there's fairness, there's equity, there's justice. There's something you can do and everybody says, okay, that makes sense. So I'm very happy with that um, judgment of the court. NBC have your guidelines. And if anybody flouts it, go to court. And there's a way the judiciary can expedite certain things, make, the, make sure the guidelines are very clear. And then your evidence is also clear. You can get judgment in a day or two. Certain matters can't yeah. be dragged. But it does so appear I'm... there is a code, a code that may have enabled the NBC to do what it does. Because even the court, the court has, uh, you know, condemned, faltered that code that seemed to have enabled the NBC to do what it's doing. Do you see no, the no, NBC no. appealing this? No, 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 no. You, you, you misquoted to the best of my knowledge. The, 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 the court actually contested a code that goes outside of the constitutional provision. Mm -hmm. There is, it, it's just like an electoral act and the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Whatever electoral act says cannot contradict. It is only legal to the extent of compliance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, outside of which it's a nullity. Okay? So the, the Federal Republic of Nigeria has given you four grounds on which you can contest election. You know, you must be sponsored by a party, you must be a Nigerian, you must be of age, and there's a fourth one that I, I can easily... If you introduce the fee in the Electoral Act and you disqualify anybody, the guy will take you to court and he will win. 
you know, I think the, way, the, the educational qualification is one. So what am I trying to say? There is no code, there is no bylaw, there is nothing that contradicts the constitution that will stand. So to that extent, I don't see the NBC wasting our taxpayers' money to try to, 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 to change that. What they could do is try to approach the National Assembly to see to what extent there could be a constitutional amendment that will give them judicial power, which, of course, is, will be an exercise in futility. The judiciary can never cede its powers to anybody. Mm. Well, this is something that pleases uh, media practitioners <laughs> like us. There's no doubt about that. You have yeah. something for yeah, me, well, uh, oh. I think that's about it. And, and friends of the media like us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. thank you, Mr. Ezekiel Inya Etok, for your time and insight. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you. All right, so we continue with the breakfast. We'll take a short break and come back to look at our very first hot topic, which borders on the security situation of the country. Stay with us.